Welcome to episode two of this series on drawing tablet pressure. Episode one was about fundamentals. In this episode, we explore the relationship between physical pressure and logical pressure. Here is a spec sheet for a hypothetical EMR pen. There are three specifications here. An initial activation force of 3 gram force, a maximum pressure of 500 gram force, and the number of pressure levels, 8192. The IAF and the maximum pressure, of course, relate to physical pressure, how much force is being exerted at the tip of the pen. The number of pressure levels, on the other hand, relates to logical pressure and has some correspondence to physical pressure. In this video, we'll explore what that relationship is. These 8,192 pressure levels are often represented as a set of integers that go from 0 to 8,191. But there are other, equally valid ways and equivalent ways of talking about these pressure levels. We could say that these logical pressure values are also floating point numbers that go from 0 to 1. Or we could say that they are percentages that go from 0% to 100%. Each way of talking about logical pressure has its benefits. And you'll see that as we talk about drawing tablets, we'll switch between them quite often. Now let's start making sense of how these logical pressure values relate to physical pressure. The logical pressure value of 8,191, this represents the maximum pressure. And from the spec sheet, we know that this corresponds to 500 gram force. The logical pressure value of 1 represents the initial activation force, and we know from the specs that means it corresponds to 3 gram force. The logical pressure of 0 is also related to the IAF. It represents any physical pressure that is less than 3 gram force. However, this still leaves us with all the other numbers between 2 and 8,190. And in a more general sense, we just do not understand the relationship between physical and logical pressure for those values. This chart gives you an overall sense of that relationship. This kind of chart is called a pressure response curve. It is telling you how a system responds to a certain kind of stimulus. In this case, the stimulus is the physical pressure and the response is the logical pressure. The horizontal x-axis represents the physical pressure. The vertical y-axis represents the logical pressure. Of course, as physical pressure increases, so does logical pressure. However, notice this is not a linear relationship. Let's take a look at some real-world EMR pens. Tablet Expert Cube collected pressure response data for a number of Wacom EMR pens. I've taken that data and plotted the pressure response curves on this chart. Again, physical pressures are on the bottom, and here it's shown as values going from 0 gram force to 800 gram force. And the vertical axis is showing logical pressure going from 0 to 1. We can ignore the bottom left where all the curves begin. That's where the initial activation force values come into play, and that's not important for this video. The top parts of the curve that hit the logical value of 1 are quite scattered, and that's because these pens differ quite a bit in their maximum pressure. Here again, and I mention this so often, the Wacom Pro Pen 2 has an extremely wide pressure range, and its maximum pressure goes to 800 gram force, which you can see in this curve at the top end. All these pressure response curves have that curved shape that I showed you earlier, and there is an impact to that curved shape. Think about the slope at any given point on those curves. The slope is extremely steep in the lower end of the pressure range, and the slope gets progressively less steep as we get to the higher end of the pressure range. Here's a good example. Let's take a look at the Wacom Pro Pen 2. The Wacom Pro Pen 2 has a pressure range of about 800 gram force. But if we press down with just 100 gram force, we will have hit the logical pressure of about 50%. We would have to press down with an additional 700 gram force in order to achieve 100% logical pressure the other pens have a similar behavior. That is, the first 100 gram force of the physical pressure range covers a lot of the logical pressure range. And the impact is this. For these pens, small changes in physical pressure at the lower end of the pressure range produce big jumps in logical pressure. And where this can show up in practical terms is, well, let's suppose you're using a brush where the pressure is mapped 
to the width of the stroke that you're making. If you're working really under 100 gram force, you may find it hard to produce a line that has a consistent width. Because again, small changes in physical pressure produce big changes in logical pressure. If you do notice this and you don't like it, you can do something. You can effectively change how physical and logical pressure are mapped, and you do that by using pressure curves. I am gonna have a separate video on pressure curves because it is a very deep topic, but for now, let's keep it simple. We'll say a pressure curve transforms the logical pressure and it can kind of reshape it. At the bottom is a pressure curve and it's kind of bowed down a little bit. At the top, you can see how that pressure curve affects the pressure response of the pen. The blue line is the original pressure response curve and the orange line is the response accounting for the pressure curve. You can see the orange line is a bit flattened out now. And if we change the pressure curve to be a little more extreme, there's even more flattening. And if we go to a really extreme pressure curve, we can make the response almost linear. And again, I'm going to go into pressure curves in much more detail in another video, but I wanted to show you in very practical terms why it is needed. Before I leave this topic, I want to make one thing clear. You might have gotten the idea that I am saying that a linear response is what you want and that you should use pressure curves in these very extreme ways. I am not saying that. I am just encouraging you to consider how you're drawing. And if you feel that your pen is too sensitive at low pressure, then start playing around with the pressure curve. You might find that not all pressure curves are even useful all the time. For example, sometimes you will want to change the pressure curve only for certain brushes. In fact, you might want to use a specific pressure curve only during certain parts of your drawing. It just highly depends on what you're trying to accomplish, and a single pressure curve may not meet all your needs consistently. How is it that we can associate a specific physical pressure value with a specific logical pressure value? It's pretty simple. We need a scale. This is the very first scale I bought to start measuring pressure. This scale is intended for weighing packages for mailing, and it is not really good at all for testing initial activation force. But for testing higher values of pressure and maximum pressure, it's totally fine. Here is my testing setup. My laptop is a Microsoft Surface Pro 8. The laptop is connected to a tablet via a USB cable. The tablet is sitting on top of a scale. You can maybe barely see the scale sticking out from under the tablet. I have moved the digital readout of the scale close to the laptop to make it easier to do the measuring. On the laptop, I'm running Krita. In Krita, there's a tool called the Tablet Tester Tool, and I've turned that tool on. This tool reports information about the pen as I press down on the tablet. So what I do is I very carefully press down with the pen on the tablet. And to be honest, I don't actually do that by hand. I built a contraption to help me hold the pen steady and apply steady pressure. But I'm not showing you that picture right now. As the pen is pressing down on the tablet, that force from the pen is also pressing down on the scale. And so I'm seeing two values. I see the logical pressure in the Krita tablet tester tool, and then I see the physical pressure on the digital readout of the scale. And that's how we are able to map logical pressure to physical pressure. Something that I noticed as I started looking at physical pressure with my EMR pens is that there is a bit of variance in the measurements. Now some variance is due to the equipment I use or my measuring methodology, but some variance is just due to the manufacturing of the pens. What this means is, if you have several units of the same model of pen, you can often see that they behave slightly differently. I'm not good at testing initial activation force, but I am good at testing maximum pressure for a pen. So let's take a look at how maximum pressure can vary I had four units of the Apple Pencil 2, and you can see they have different maximum pressure readings. This amount of variance is very typical. The Wacom 1 Gen 1 model pen, model number CP913, also has a very typical variance for maximum pressure. The most recent Huion pens, the PW600 and PW600S, have very little variance. These are actually two different models, of course, but they share the same technology, so I thought it was fair to treat them as if they were the same pen model. The PW517 pen from Huion really surprised me. I have four of these pens, 
and the maximum pressure I found was all over the place. It did average out to 200 gram force, which is what I expect. However, some of these pens went as low as 150 gram force and one went as high as 380 gram force. I don't know what's causing this amount of variance and it's very abnormal. Maybe I dropped some of the pens. In any case, I will continue testing and I'll probably order a few more of these PW517 pens. In this episode, I also wanted to clarify how the pressure detection works in greater detail. How does the tablet really get from physical pressure to logical pressure? In episode one, I showed you these photos of a pressure sensor inside a Wacom pen. I could not find documentation specifying the exact type of pressure sensor that they are using, but I think it is a piezoelectric sensor. Piezo comes from the Greek word, which means pressure or stress. Piezoelectric materials produce a voltage when they are deformed, when there's some stress applied to them. So in an EMR pen, the nib will cause something to press against the sensor and that will create a voltage. And I think it is that voltage or some numerical translation of it, which is the information that's being sent to the tablet. The tablet takes this information and then the tablet determines what the logical pressure is. There is one subtle but very important point to stress here. The number of pressure levels is invented by the tablet firmware. The tablet firmware could say there are 4,000, 8,000, or 16,000 pressure levels. It is all the creation of the tablet firmware, not of the pen. And in fact, I have heard of at least one case where a tablet manufacturer shipped a firmware update that increased the number of pressure levels. And this is consistent with what I'm telling you, that the number of pressure levels are a creation of the tablet firmware and not the pen. What next? I'd like to explore the landscape of physical pressure measurements that I've made for initial activation force and maximum pressure values. I'd like to give you all a better sense of what I think is good, bad, or great in terms of IAF and max pressure. In this video, I talked about pressure curves briefly, but again, there's so much more to that topic, so a separate video will be coming eventually. I'll also get to a video where I talk about the number of pressure levels, and specifically, I'll address one of the most popular questions, which is, how many pressure levels do you need? Thanks for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah.